Welcome to Robinson Family Farm. It is early on a Sunday morning and I'm getting ready to head back to our house down in South Jersey. In the meantime, uh, Tina was up here as well, but she left a little earlier. So I stayed behind, finished packing everything up. I showered, I'm getting ready to head out, but I want to film this short video for you first. So the point of this video is to walk you through the rest of the land that you may or may not have seen and kind of give you an idea how we want to line everything up and where we're going to put the animals and, and what have you. Tina and I had a, a pretty thorough discussion yesterday about that, and this is constantly evolving. The biggest challenge that we have is we have three acres and we have a small septic system that's going to be dug soon, and we also have a well that's going to be drilled. And then there's uh, requirements for the distance between the septic and the well. And there's also, of course, uh, you can't build so close to the septic leach field. So we are going to get that installed in the spring. And this is the end of October of 2022. Once those two items are installed and successfully done, then we can realize in a better way where everything can be laid out. But we have a basic plan and I'm going to walk you through that now. A few weeks ago, I made a, a very short video walking through what I call the nature trail in the back of our property. And it's really just me cutting a path through the brush and maintaining that path instead of having to take the time to maintain the entire area. It's a little easier this way. But we're going to use that trail to kind of point out where everything's going to go. So I'm going to spin you around and uh, we'll start talking. So here is the shed slash cabin that we've been using as home base in the meantime. We built a little outdoor kitchen type area out of scraps and uh, usually we have a griddle that's just lined up right here. It's a propane griddle and we've been cooking steaks and shrimp and eggs and it's just been so awesome. Excellent breakfast the whole time. Over here on this area, this was a failed attempt at building a cabin at first and this land is all chewed up and it's not suitable for a permanent foundation any longer because of that. And we are going to use this area for some animals. So this could be our sheep, it could be part of the cow pen, whatever we end up doing. So when I say animals, we're not quite sure exactly where each are going to go, but this could be an area for an animal. Over here in this area where that tarp is and that big gravel pile, uh, we're going to put the workshop. So the workshop is going to be made primarily out of those shipping containers. Originally, those shipping containers were going to be a cabin in this area, and we just kind of switched gears after a while, and that's how we ended up with the pole barn house. So the workshop is going to be built out of these containers that we purchased. We're going to use them anyway, and at the moment, they're just storage, so it's working out quite well. And that'll go in this area over here. Going back in this direction, we can now enter the trail, as we've been calling it, and this area to the right... We're going to get this cleared out eventually, and this is going to be more animal pen. And somewhere down here, all these trees got to go. We're going to put a little hay barn or a feed storage building of some kind. And that will be where we keep, of course, everything we need to feed the animals. We have this area here, and in the distance you can see the, uh, the pole barn house. This area here to my left is going to be another animal area, and I just feel like it's a great use of this spot. So we've got to get it all cleared out. And we have a plan for that that we can reveal eventually. And again, completely emptied out. All these trees, all this brush, everything's going to go. This tree here is some kind of fir tree. I'm not quite familiar with it. But my plan is to put a tree stand and use this area here as a small hunting lot. With our short visits and with our seldom visits we get a lot of wildlife on this property we have a fox that visits every night we have a stray cat that comes by occasionally but we get a lot of turkey and a lot of deer and i want to use this area right outside this tree in this area make a little food plot and hunt some deer hunt some turkey so that's the short-term goal the long-term goal is as you can see get all this stuff cleaned out just get it cut down and we're going to put animal pens in these areas. Now, the animal pens could go up in this area as well, but once you get past a certain point, our plan is to use this as our fruit tree grove or our orchard, whatever you want to call it. Apple trees, peach trees, uh, pear trees, cherry trees. We have enough space 
to put the really tall species in this area close to a little ledge that we have because we have a stream back there. So we're going to put the taller trees here. And since this is south facing in this direction, taller ones and work our way down in height all the way down to the bushes as we get closer to the house. So we'll have a back deck off of the house, house in this direction and we can have our uh, blueberry plants or raspberry plants, blackberry bushes, all that stuff could be in this area here. And then our fruit trees will be over here. And if we keep coming through, again, this really is a lot bigger than we expected and the camera probably isn't doing it justice. Just imagine all this emptied out, fairly level grounds, all this cleaned up, and we could have apple trees right here, and we could have pear trees right there, and so on. And we just have to figure out what's going to work together, and uh, we go from there. Up in this area, we could have our uh, chicken coop for our layers. We're still trying to figure that out, but we'll get it. We have enough land. And then, off in this direction, with the rest of the trail. Over here, we could have uh, a little area where we're planning on growing some Christmas trees for ourselves. We love the idea of just growing our own and cutting them down when we need it. And if we grow enough, maybe we could sell one or two, or we can even donate them or give them to family. It's just the idea of giving back for Christmas, the holiday season, and uh, yeah, just using the land that we have to do that. So this area here could be our Christmas trees. And we don't need to grow too many, you know, plant three or four a year and go from there. It takes about six or seven years, I think, to get a tree of suitable size. If you want it to be six or seven feet tall, it takes about six or seven years. Anyway, this area, again, could be more of our fruit trees. And getting down into this spot, this will get less sun because, well, maybe not so much because all these trees are going down. So when I cut these down, it'll open up this area here for more sun. It's real early in the morning and that's the sun coming up off in that direction. And then this is the south facing area. So we have all that wide open sky just to soak up the sun and grow some fruit. It's going to be great. Now you might be wondering where the vegetable garden's going to go. That's out front by the road on the other side of the house. So moving forward down here, ultimately we could use this area a little bit too. We have our land goes right to, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a pink ribbon there on a tree off in the distance. So we have just a little strip of land here on this little hill. We could use that for one thing or another, or just use it as a natural barrier and leave it be. We haven't decided, but I mentioned a stream and uh, this area here, is all just muddy, soft, and, and wet ground, so I'm not going to walk through it at the moment. But just imagine a floating dock that starts right on this uh, firm ground and goes all the way out, about four feet wide, and it opens up to a large area where we can literally just fish right from our own property on that stream. It's a year-round stream. They stock it with trout. It's just going to be awesome. We can have our morning coffee out there. We can have dessert after dinner out there. We can do whatever we want because it's ours and we're going to build it ourselves. And it's just a phenomenal feeling. So spinning around, we can work our way back up the trail and uh, we're going to head up to the house and I'll show you a little bit about that. But this whole area is just going to be a massive fruit slash berry grove that we can grow anything we want. Like we said earlier, apples, pears, peaches, anything. And we've been looking up on, I think it's a Stark Brothers website. They do a really good job of telling you what you're able to grow in your area and what zone the, uh, the plants can grow successfully given the weather and the climate. So we've been using that as the biggest resource. And just imagine, this is the backyard. It's a lot bigger than I imagined when I was first thinking about buying a piece of property like this. All this is gonna get cleared out. Uh, we want bees. All the bees could be scattered throughout the uh, orchard in this area here. We have a bunch of trees that we cut down with sizable stumps and we could just level those stumps and with a chainsaw and put the hive right on that. If we decide to do that, that sounds great. And then of course, here's the house. So put it in perspective, we're thinking about getting a deck built and we could have a jacuzzi or a hot tub right in this corner here. 
and then the deck would go off in that direction, full length of the house, and that'll allow us to see everything that we've worked so hard for. And again, we could just have dinner right out here, just enjoying our own property. Coming around to the front of the house, this is gonna be the driveway ultimately, and you can see the gate there for the fence that Tina and I have been building. And uh, that's gonna eventually get finished. And this is where the greenhouse is gonna go, between these two trees. We might have mentioned that in the previous video. But we're gonna put a small greenhouse at 20 feet, 25 feet, something like that, whatever can fit in that area. So I have a lot of stumps to dig up or grind down. And we'll put that greenhouse right there. Outside on the other edge of the greenhouse, we're gonna do all kinds of raised garden beds. Uh, we like the idea of doing raised garden beds because, you know, bending down and we can do whatever we want with them really. Anyway, this whole area here in this big open space is gonna be a bunch of raised garden beds. All of our potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, anything you could think of, we can grow right here. On top of that, on the other side of the fence, we have all this area here. I'm gonna grow corn. And I'm thinking about growing enough corn where we can literally just eat enough of corn all year round. That's the goal. Grow enough food so we could survive for a year. And all that could be out here. We have about, I think, 250 feet of road frontage. And the fence is 30 feet from the center of the road. So we have plenty of room. And we're going to be able to grow everything we want. The biggest issue we're dealing with right now is this burn pile. And we've talked about that in previous videos. We did put a big dent into it this weekend. But that's just in the way. And full circle... This is where the workshop's gonna go. This is gonna be the future home of my other channel, Getting Junk Done, and everything that we do will be taking place in those two shipping containers. So that's that, that's the full basic layout. It doesn't take long to walk the property, but there's enough room to do everything that we want and need. So being the end of October, we really only have a few more visits left in the, in the year because the road that we're on is actually a seasonal road and is part of the snowmobile trail. It's not something that they would plow, not by the township anyway. So we either have to get a plow and do it ourselves, or if enough people decide to live on this road in the future full time, then they would have to switch that policy up to being part of the typical tow uh, plow schedule for most other roads. Not a big deal. I can get a plow. I can do it. But I have to work it out with the uh, head of the snowmobile club so I'm not stepping on his toes and come to some sort of agreement. In the meantime, because of that, we don't live here full time. It's not something I'm just going to start doing. We are going to have to work with winter in the meantime. So if there's so much snow on the ground, we're just not coming up. And they don't plow it between, I think, Thanksgiving and April 1st, something like that. Uh, I don't quite know, but it is somewhere in November and somewhere in April. So, which means after April, there probably won't be any snow anyway. So I'll be able to come up and start doing some more work in the spring. But we got a couple more visits this year to get more work done. And I'll be coming up again soon. I have a whole week off of from school for a fall break. So I'm going to have several days coming up soon to get a lot of work done. Cutting down a lot of these little spindly trees, stuff like you see behind me doing more of the burn pile and starting to clear out some areas in the back for uh, maybe some spring turkey hunt. We'll see. All right. Well, with that, thanks for watching. And uh, Tina will be in the next video. I'll really try to make that happen because she's coming up too uh, with that next uh, long several days that I'll have up here. So she's going to come up as well and uh, we can get her in the video as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment. You know what to do, everything. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.